And welcome. <laughs> and welcome to the Gladiators of Sport with Mr. Peak running late. And not on time. And here he is, the fattest man in the free world, Mr. Peak. Yay! <laughs> it started. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the test run. Am I in the shot? This is no, no, no. I don't want to be. Uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this is the test run of the first show of 2016 of the Gladiators of Sports, starring S.J. Peak and the beautiful, the gorgeous, and the fit. Mr. Troy Center. Come in, come in. A free copy here with a massive studio audience today. And now we're, we're at the secret location. Secret location. Secret. Don't tell anybody. Are you going to sit down, Troy? Fantastic to see Pete a million dollars in his uh, Roger David shirt there he's come up the tree Testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, testing. A testing, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Microphones, you may have to speak into them. Okay, well, I need that raised then, yeah? And the microphone. And the testing, I'll stand up on it. Yeah, I want to stand up. So, yeah. yeah, I'm going to do it like what? this. Yep, yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. Michael Williamson, Football Inquest. Now he's comparing himself to Michael Williamson. Ready to go? Okay, well, well we're, we're going to edit all that other crap out. You? <laughs> you better. You better. You going to see it? Uh -huh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, out there in Gladiators of Sportland for the first edition this year of the Allen Man's Moulders, Liquid Black Coffee, Ricardo Stratoria, and Yellow Door. Alan Mance Moulders, Gladiators of Sport, right here for you today. Our first show, first up this season at uh, around a three in the football. Very happy to be back and now live to you on YouTube uh, as we speak and we hope you enjoy this program. And, and, and SoundCloud. And uh, SoundCloud as well. So we're going to do, we're we're do both. We're going to be doing YouTube cloud. and we're going to have the visual and audio version. Yes, but we're also just going to have the audio version. Okay, that's Mr. Philip Mance, the Managing Director of the Great Alan Mance Moulders in Footscray, Milton and Bacchus Marsh. <laughs> Mance Mania has a hold of me, yeah, baby. Plenty of car deals available for you as we speak at Alan Mance Moulders. Um, do you know this could be our first and last show because actually looking at you, you've got a good head for radio. No, that's okay, Philip. Uh, we don't need those type of comments when we're presenting <laughs> ourselves to the public at large. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I, I think it's far better for you to live in anonymity. No, I don't need to be anonymous. I'm uh, Mr. Everything. So now let's have a look at what we've got. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the issues of the day. As we did in the last couple of years, Troy, we don't need to touch my coffee. Thanks, mate. That's going to disturb my process because I need to sip on that. As Are I you go going to introduce me? I will get to it. If you don't well, take my hurry. coffee, I'll get down to introducing you to the show. Sir, to my left, I have SEN 1116's very own Mr. Troy Zanta. Good afternoon, Troy. Thank you very much, Stephen. And uh, great to have Phil on board. The Gladiators of Sport YouTube. Who would have thought? Who would have believed it? 
the great man Stephen J. Peak, right in front of that camera. What a magnificent looking guy he is. Well, don't worry about me, ladies and gentlemen, because we've got some massive issues. To my right, we here, have to, we I have to Mr. worry Philip about Mance, you. the managing director of Alan Mance Motors. You've already introduced <laughs> I'm doing it again, Philip, because you're a massive individual that needs to be mentioned at least more than once in a program. So you'll be getting 100 introductions then. Well, Philip, uh, let me say, ladies and gentlemen, if it wasn't for Mr. Mance, who has excellent uh, uh, electronic skills, internet skills, YouTube skills, camera work skills, microphone skills, we wouldn't be here today. He's put it all together for us to be able to broadcast you today from Liquid Black Coffee headquarters at 165 Ashworth Street, Middle Park, where you can obtain all of your quality Liquid Black Coffee products. Right here, young Josh at the front, the managing director of the company, will sort you out with your bags of coffee beans. He'll make you a coffee uh, on the spot he's to a great, test. He's a great to coffee maker, isn't he, Steve? He certainly is, One and he'll best. do a great yeah. job. And I'm sipping this beautiful hot flat white. 1.5 strength is the Stephen J. Peak style. I need a little bit of extra caffeine. Mm. And don't tell Wada, of course, as I sip this. He's uh, already on the third person. Loves talking about himself. Yeah, that's okay, and uh, we won't need to worry about that. Now, now, we're, we're, now small issue. Yeah, let's get into the issues, so Phil. You're well, going to do the show virtually the, from standing in front of me, eh? which is most one, unusual. The first one was that we've had you, we had you turned down too much, so now I've got the headset on, which looks yep. a bit ridiculous, but it's important. Yep. No worries with uh, that. Because you refuse to talk into the mic. I was right in, bellowing into this yeah, thing yeah. Um, no, no. Uh, there. Yeah. Philip only called you Alan for a minute, but that's, that's your dad. Well, that had just been insulted. It would be, that's your father. Now, the first issue today, ladies and gentlemen, all of you would have read the Herald Sun by now, the sports section, the big round of football coming up. David King has written a very interesting article, the first person to tackle it in any shape or form, about where Ross Lyon is heading with his tactical pursuits concerning the Fremantle Football Club. He's David hopeless. King. What, sorry? He's hopeless. Who's hopeless? Fremantle. Fremantle. If they had a poor start to the year. Do you know why they've had a poor excuse start, me, Phil? Excuse me, Troy. Yeah, yeah look, let's start from the yeah, yeah, start. Okay, let's, let, this is Mr. 68% you're talking about. Yeah, win-loss ratio. Fremantle yeah. or but, Fremantle? But let's not press the panic button, Phil. It's a sure. very long way to go. But, you know, in saying that, they've got a way to a poor start. Being poor. beaten by the Gold Coast poor. at home, convincingly, serious worrying. There's, there's worrying signs there, Phil. Make no mistake about poor. it. Paul, they've, they've actually, they're, they're half capitulated, capitulated, oh, excuse yeah. me, in the first two rounds. And uh, absolutely had their pants pulled down by the well, Western Bulldogs the, early. I think I had them in third or fourth. The, West, 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 the, the Gold, Coast, Gold Coast won by 26 points. It was 126 to 100. Uh, which is unusual for a Mandel to allow a game like that. And, and, and why is it that we've seen these big scores kicked? Because Ross Lyon over the summer changed his game plan. As David King has pointed out today in the Herald Sun, his half-back line now pushes up into the midfield trying to push the ball forward to create further and better scoring opportunities, which is a change to the Ross Lyon lockdown game of football. Well, so he has completely changed his game plan. Well, it would now appear that that game plan, his players are struggling to come to terms with it to get away from lockdown football. So it would appear to me, and David, good on you, David, for pointing that out, because he's the only person, the first person to pick out that Ross Lyon over summer did change his game plan around a more attacking game plan with the half-back line pushing up. All well, I want God. people to do is have a read of these articles and analyse the situation before you go into the street where you get the, any, any member of the squillery can walk along the street and say, oh, Ross Lyon can't win a flag. Ross Lyon, negative football. Ross Lyon can't kick goals. Oh. Teams get it wrong. They can't coach. Oh, yeah. Tell me the solutions. Tell me what you think he should be doing. Oh, so he should be more attacking, should he? Well, he's gone more attacking, and he's tried that on for size, and it ain't working with his team the way it is at the moment. That ain't working. He's got to go back to what he was doing, what? in my view. Defence. Yep, yeah, lockdown football. That's Crap. what his boys are trying to do. Shit football. Well, that's, that, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, Philip, at all times. And I see well, you we, call it oh. that. Well, and, 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 and boring. Might I add, you just used some very poor language to describe that, I might say. Well, that's okay. <laughs> and that's well, really for that. That's, why, that's why we've got an editing you team. Can, yeah. You can drop the F bomb if you <laughs> like. I'm not going to do that if you don't want. I'm, I speak well, the Queen's I'll English. You, well, before we I'm get well into that, talking about, mm. I did watch Footyology yep. uh, on YouTube. Yeah, Mark Fine yep. and Rowan Connolly doing Fine. some very nice work. Excellent okay. show. Yep. And very well uh, produced. Yes. Uh, they have a number of editing staff, yes. and behind the camera here, mm -hmm. there are several of us uh, doing the editing. There's the sound man. Correct. Uh, 
the cameraman. Yeah, well, Do you need a towel, man? No, no, I might need a towel in a minute. I'm getting a bit hot here, but don't, Troy, don't worry about is that. Is it the lights, the studio lights that are? It's a bit warm in here, but that's okay. I'll get through that. Troy, I think you need might need to be fanned down. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, well let's fanned not worry down. about my body temperature at the moment. Let's go back. Oh, I don't need. <laughs> I don't need that. If you don't mind, because I had a word to you about that yesterday. That's, you're uh, you're beetrooting up at the that's moment. Quite a, that's you're quite a gruesome uh, expose you <laughs> told me about yesterday involving that type of thing, uh, Troy. <laughs> Yes, uh, Stephen. You've heard my dissertation I have. about David King, about well, what do you think, Troy? Have you, you got a point Ross of view? Have you read that article yet, or have you not read it? Or are you going to read it, or what are you going to do about it? I've got to say, I have read the article. You've read it, okay. And it's very well constructed. Mm -hmm. But let's not get away from the facts. Ross Lyon, a great coach. And no doubt about that, Peaky. Mm -hmm. Not a premiership coach, doesn't get the job done on the last Saturday in September, October. So, doesn't yeah. get the job done. Yeah, well, so he's not a great coach. No, no, he's else. a great coach in the regular season. Yeah, but not in the final series. Well, it's so he changes his game it's plan. It's been proven. In, changes his game plan in the final series, uh, series, does he? Away from home and away, and therefore becomes a worse coach. I think if he can get the Dockers into the finals this year after such a poor start, mm -hmm. say top six, I think that's what they'd be looking for yeah, at but, the moment yeah, after, okay. after a 0 2 start. And let's be honest, being beaten by Gold Coast. Mm. 26 points and they're third on the ladder. Oh, at home, them. Yeah. Was, nothing, at home. Yeah. was yeah. unthinkable, to, well, be, to be brutally honest. Well, well so you, don't, you reckon Gold Coast are a weak, low team, are they? No, Gold Coast are coming along very nicely. But okay. Where you, do you think they'll finish at the end of the year then? Well, they could be around 8 to 10. Okay, where have you got Frio? Well, I, originally I had Frio 6th this year. Okay, where have you, you got them now? Why did you have them, Peggy? you got them now? I've got them top four. Where, have you, where, where did oh, you have so them? Did I. Yeah, look... Seventh or eighth. Okay, I think so the I same think, spot as I Gold think Coast. they'll make the finals. Yeah, so basically, just. you've got Fremantle and Gold Coast finishing roughly next to each other. Yeah, I have. Okay, so and Gold Coast beat them by 26 points. Not a great deal of difference, and that could that, that anything could happen in the turn. Not the a great deal of difference. It was the first time ever mm. in their history the Gold Coast have won at mm. Subiaco. Yeah, but that's, that's so that 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 is a got to happen. It's a groundbreaking moment. But it is. Well, they seem to be pretty good. They've got a great full forward in Tom Lynch, and they've got a very good player in Gary Ablett Jr. There, who's come back now in full flight and form, and a fairly good all round side, and a good coach in Rodney Eade, who knows what it's all about. Let's get back to your... I hear what you say about Ross Lyon. You know I'm going to totally disagree with you because I've said this time and time again. Anyone who follows the uh, even even the experts who examine what's going on with what's happened to him in grand finals, and I've said it time and time again. You heard me say it on 11.16 SCN. Have a look at the failure of small forwards in particular and midfielders failing to execute in grand finals for Ross Lyon. It's happened three times. That is not the coach's fault. He's in the box. He can't go out there and kick the ball through the goalposts. Nat Fife, Pat Pavlich, Mundy, there was a number of them in that grand final against Hawthorne. All of them missed goals inside 50 or on 50-yard line from stationary positions, often after taking marks. There was the hot spot showed about 11 missed goals inside about 53 metres. So this is going to be the ifs and buts hour, No, it? it's not an ifs and buts hour. That's fact. That's, a, that's not an if or but. That, the, the fact is they missed easy goals in front of goal. And the goal. Fact, in the 2009 grand final, missed easy goals in the first half. They were seven goals, seven and half time, 35 inside 50s, mind you, to Geelong's 15 and lost the game. Mm -hmm. Have you now ever that, heard of the old adage, good kicking is yeah, good correct, football? Co correct, but that's not the coach's fault. Thank you, Philip. That is not the fault of the coach. Uh, the team on I the think ground. Think we we'll need a few of those. Teams, the team on the ground, Troy. The players themselves are out there to execute the game plan and execute goal kicking. He's had it happen to him three mm -hmm. times. Even in the the rematch against Collingwood in the replay, Sam Gilbert kicked one for Snyder. I think kicked one three or close to it, uh, missing shots on the run and in front. We saw the revolts, mother, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Players not executing in front of goal. That's got nothing to do with Ross Lyon's game plan. Nothing whatsoever when a player can't kick accurately because the, the, the game plan's been executed, the ball's gone forward, and they're having shots for goal. So that's where I'm at on that issue. You've heard me say it a million times. David King, good article. He set it all up, and uh, he says, well, what does he do? And he's basically saying, Ross, that's the bell. forget about... Who's that? That's the bell. The bell for what? End of that Moving topic. On. OK, Moving just on. let me say it. He's correct. You know... He compared it to Coca-Cola and Coca-Cola brought a new brand of Coke in in 1985. Oh. He said it didn't work. They Everything went back to. comes back to food and drink with you, doesn't it? Well, did him David King's article. He's got a can of Coke in the article. Oh. Uh, back to fizzy, fizzy and fizziness, he says. So if it's a new can of Coke, 1995, you bring in, didn't work, go back to your old style. Ross, 
Got no problems with me, mate. Locked down footy. And a bit, a bit like Colonel Sanders uh, with an extra herb and spice. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Now, during the week, gentlemen, or uh, well, last weekend. During the week. Last weekend. Last weekend. Last weekend, Troy, sorry. Last weekend in a game of football, local football, involving a young side. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I have another little sip of my hot 1.5 we'll coffee. Beautifully coffee beans made here in Queensland. Let me tell you this. Made here what? in Queensland. We're Queensland. actually filming I didn't from fly here, here Queensland. in Australia. In yeah. Queensland. We're, we're actually, in Australia. And, yeah. and yeah, don't, if, if I have to say every sentence, if I, if we're I have actually to, in Middle Park, Victoria. Know, know, but look, for the know, benefit of our uh, listeners, uh, 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 we're in no, Queensland. I hear what you say. I hear what you say, right? Close. Number one. Yep. We're here in Middle Park, right? Correct. Recording Correct. a show yep. at Black, Liquid Black Coffee in Correct. 165 Ashworth Street, Middle Park. Now, uh, I was talking gotta, about... It's a secret, like... The, don't say the coffee it's easy beans to find. Are made. The coffee beans are made in Queensland. Now, is that you didn't easy? say that. I mean, the, the, I think our listening audience out there, they've understood what I mean. No, they, they think we're in Queensland. But you two jokers, you've had a big problem with this, by the sound of it. <laughs> no, we have a problem with you. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. No, no, well, you don't speak the Queensland. I, do, I speak it... Absolutely. I don't know how you get on with the court. He speaks I get on very well in the courtroom, actually. Uh, I'm well respected by the yeah. magistracy and the judiciary. The magistracy? The magistracy and the judiciary. And no. I respect the magistracies and the judiciary 110% and they are completely oh, of aware of that. He speaks the court just as English. I may also say the, the police prosecutor said, Jeff Adams and the boys, thank you very much for your support over the years. And uh, very Thumbs impressed. up for the boys. Yeah, very impressed with their support. Oh. Some of them I've given some... Uh, uh, Alan Mann's Motors T-shirts too along the way. Gladiators and Sport SEN T-shirts, and they're very happy new, to accept those. New one, yeah. mate. Yeah, like new one, mate. Yep. Like to ingratiate uh, yourself to anybody else while we're at it. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, but that's uh, that's uh, oh. that's all we can cover this point. Now let me get back to last weekend. Hang on a last second, it's your mother. It's about the language. Hello. Oh, 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 <laughs> that phone's dead. <laughs> Just, that's a dummy phone. Now, it's a bit like your YouTube career. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get back to what happened last weekend at a local football game in TAC Cup, right? Dustin Fletcher was there. Ken Fletcher was there. So you had the grandfather, the father and the son. Mason Fletcher was playing in the game, right? Mm-hmm. Playing in the game. His father, Dustin who's he Fletcher. Play, who's he play for? Uh, called the Cannons, I think. Right. His father, Dustin Fletcher, sitting in the grandstand with Ken Fletcher, former Eston champion wingman. Yep. Uh, the father could not go down into the rooms to speak to his son at quarter time, or three, sorry, in the ground at quarter time, in the rooms at, or before half the time. game at half time and yep. three quarter time to go on the ground to see what the coach was saying to the players, right? Uh, and, and, and you know where I'm going with this, you know, WADA, WADA rules. The father could not, because he's been suspended, he's now down in the... Uh, uh, up in the grandstand, wasn't allowed back in the rooms. I'm surprised he was allowed at the game. Why wouldn't he be allowed at the game to see his son play? I thought what, they what, weren't what allowed. It? I thought they weren't allowed. What's he got? Bubonic plague or something? Is he? No, no, I, no. I thought the water rules were that you weren't even allowed. No, you to can you can go to a game. Essendon players no, no are suspended. No disrespect to, to a racing thing. Mm-hmm. If you've been banned from the racetrack, mm-hmm. you can't actually go to. Oh, the well, races. that's a different rule altogether. That's uh, Why? that's well, it's a different set of rules. Don't forget, racing comes under government legislation. It's state government legislation, the Racing Act. Well, and the, the stewards football have comes under the world. under that legislation. <coughs> yeah, but the football comes under the world regulation. The footy uh, comes up, yeah, but to WADA is, that is not based under any government rules or regulations no. at all. Okay, WADA so is a wildcat outfit that came out of the Olympic Games movement, which is not based on well, any can I government ask you this? legislation, right. Let but it's a privately this organised organisation, Philip. Let me ask you this question. Yeah, yes, Philip, let's take a ship, yes. If I'm a band Essendon player, and I, am I allowed to go to an AFL game and watch? Yes. I, don't, I think that's a no. No, it's a yes. You can go to the game, but you cannot go in the rooms. You can't go on the ground. Well, You can't so partake far, of any sponsored AFL so far function. This year, no, no, that so far this year. You can't work for an AFL club as well. Yeah, yeah. Guy don't just... forget, Philip, at the Carlton Essendon practice game or NAB Challenge game this year, Dyson Heppel was there with, of course, the, their very good friend, the Greek Sheik, Nick Bartels, and his father, Michael Bartels, former Carlton board member, were right. watching the game in the in the, uh, the, bell, the balcony well, area. Matt, I haven't seen any of the band AFL players at... A, AFL game. Well, that's because the Genos haven't taken a photo. But they're allowed to go. They can go to the game. They cannot. Oh. They're allowed inside to watch the game, but they cannot go into the rooms. They oh, can't well, go onto the ground. They can't. Well, that's uh, news to me. Do, they, they can't take a job in football. Nathan Lovett Murray lost a coaching job worth hundred plus thousand dollars. Brett Prismore cannot work at the Bulldogs as a development officer. He's no, lost which is fair. Probably two hundred thousand dollars. And now um, Dustin Fletcher can't even speak to his son at quarter time, three quarter time. This is yell from the ground. What was indicated the... to me by a lawyer the other day is the AFL, when they joined this organisation, the WADA system, did not check out 
that it would appear they didn't the due diligence of the fallout from after a suspension takes place and what happens to you it is disgusting well, it's actually in breach of in my opinion trade practices act well, preventing you know, people you, from well, from plying banned, their trade if you banned you banned Troy aren't you well I think we Have need you to get actually got sick of sitting next to him as or? far as legalese I think we need to get peaky I think we need to get him onto this because if there's a legal mind who could get through this minefield it could be just it could just be this man which, which minefield well, this legal you, minefield. Well, no, 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 I'll tell you what, there's, there's probably you, I'll be 30 happy to 40. In 20 weeks' time when it's all over and we can all move on because I'm you're sick of it. Yeah, you're sick of it because it's wearing you down, Philip, because it's. Well, well it's I was ever, so happy that the, the present. Bombers. Yeah, but I'm happy that the Bombers won last week. Look, it was week. great yeah. that the, you know, their fans marched to the G. 50,000, <laughs> over 50,000 turned up, Phil. It was a, a great atmosphere. And to see the Bombers celebrate after the game was like they'd won the Premiership. So, look. Yeah. They've, they've been through you know, absolute turmoil and they've come out on the other side and they've unearthed a few young guys who may not have got a game if, uh, if, if the 12 blokes had been playing. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I believe that they'll hang on to some of these um, Darcy Parrish was absolutely outstanding. Uh, yeah, good young kid. Rising star nomination. Uh, Joe Danaher was Joe fantastic, Danaher. Phil. Yeah, yeah. Could have kicked straighter, but boy, if he yeah. had a kick straighter, it would have been... All over bar the so shouting. That's, so that's three genera- two or three generations of Danahers. Two. 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 Yeah. yeah. So right n- young uh, McDonald Tip and Woody, he was, uh, yep. he was outstanding. So a, a lot to like about the Bombers. Look, but, but, mate, if they win two or three games this year, I think their fans will be happy. But they're actually having a crack. And that's what uh, obviously Warsfold in, installed into them very early days. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to how they go next year when they get most of those guys back. But, um, yeah, look, Darcy Parrish, he's going to be a star of the future. Mm, yes, no doubt about that. He's, uh, he's already got well, he's got a rising star nomination this week. So normally when you, you get that early in your career, you go on. And the, it seems to be the history of it. Yeah, very and good ball user, Peaky, and uh, a yeah. very good football brain for such a young man. Yeah, look, I felt pretty good for even a guy like Brendan Goddard, who's captaining that side at the moment. I felt uh, fairly good for him, being ex- and not just because he ex- and killed a man, but he's, he got there just when all this broke and it just nothing's worked out for him until now there's a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. This, this, this mob, I believe they can win at least six, maybe eight games after that win on the weekend. I, I think they're, they've got the guys they've picked up from Geelong, Stokes and Kelly, uh, and then throw in a few of the others like Crowley, uh, and then when Grimmer comes in, Grimer, Grimmer, uh, you can Troy. Yeah, look, uh, Stokes and Kelly, absolutely <laughs> premiership. He was players. looking for a correction on English there, but is it Grimer or Grimmer? I don't know. No, Troy. we'll we'll just let him free ball today, Phil. <laughs> for our first show, and we'll we'll iron things out probably by round twenty-two. <laughs> so, well, look, you can have it either way. You know, is it Nathan yeah. Grimer or Nathan Grimmer? I don't know. Well, That's why I was but asking. Just in uh, relation to the question that you posed before, Phil, uh, why yeah. am I standing here? Well, I just like to give yeah. the big fella a bit of room. Yeah, I appreciate that. Actually, he's giving me more. I like room, to so. face him. I like to look him in the eye. Well, this is the first time I've seen the actual studio, Mm. and one problem is... I'm very impressed (laughs) with this. ...the actual bench space. And you're looking very much like you're a contestant on Perfect Match over there, Phil. I'm just waiting for Greg Evans and Kerry Friend to appear. I'm I'm very happy to be here, so... uh, (laughs) So you should be. No doubt about that. But just getting back to, and I don't want to harp on the issue... But But that means you're going to harp on it. Yeah, because there's one thing I abhor as a legal man, absolutely abhor as someone who's trying to ply their trade in a proper and workmanlike fashion and can't do it due to arch- archaic and troglodytic rules brought down by a private okay. sporting organisation which needs to get the sack by the AFL big I've job. I've got one for yeah. you, OK? The tennis player... Mm-hmm. Oh, Kyrgios? Woman tennis... No, no. I'm talking about Nikki Kyrgios. No, He's firing no, at the moment. No, oh. we don't want to talk you about You want to talk about Maria Sharapova? No, Betty Stover. He's a big fan of uh, Dutch... Well, well, why does he Dutch keep raising women. Stover's name when he ever, I'm, I'm anywhere near him in a radio show or now that we're here doing that as a sporting mentions Betty Stover. I'm, she was never one of my favourite players. No, no, Betty Stover girl, was somewhat a good player but cumbersome. The, the girl who was taking that drug and it was banned Maria on Sharapova. the 30th, yeah. Maria Sharapova. Yep, yep. Um, First of January, yep. Yeah, and then she Maldonium. got pinched mm. on the Maldonium on the 14th. Yep. Should she, she be should she be banned or not banned? Well, I don't think we've had the first hearing yet with the Women's Tennis Federation. They hold the first hearing and they have been notified by Asada of the Same test. Same sort of thing, though. Uh, Forgot. Never got the email. Well, no, 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 no. She said she'd... Uh, Philip, I can correct you there if I may. 
Just an observation, of course, not a criticism. Not a criticism. Yeah. <laughs> she did get emails from WADA, she said, but there was massive amounts of uh, material on them and she didn't open the, all of the attachments up, which could have been could have been a dozen attachments. Well, you're notorious know. for that, aren't you? Not opening your attachments up. Well, attachments, you've got to go to the attachments, right? And you've got to, what you've got to do is you've got to mm. link down. But she said, look, I get a million Facebook messages, I get a million emails, all the rest of it. Now, whether or not she's got a management team who plough through but her emails... That should be at the top of her list. What? January 1st yeah. to check everything that is legal and illegal that she can take yeah. when she's playing tennis. Yeah, what's so special is about that the common first of sense? January? Well, what's so special about the 1st of January? On the first day of the year? Yeah, but that doesn't mean that Wada, Wada can change their rules and ban substances any 365 days a year. Oh, okay, so when it's, you it's get when an you email get notification, from Wada... Right? Yeah, when you get an email yeah, from Marta, yeah. you open it and you yeah, read she it. Did, she opened the first part of it, but she didn't open the attachments. That was oh, the point I was yeah, making on. Yeah, now, yeah. that's where her... I think you're drawing a very long Well, well that's, what, that's her evidence at the moment, and that's the evidence she will present. And you're, buy, present. you're buying that, are you? Well, at the moment, so it comes down to the best evidence rule when we look at these type of things. At the oh. moment, that's the best evidence we've got on the table. No one can dispute what she says about that. It's whether or not the tribunal takes that into account how much weight it gives that evidence in making their decision. And whether or not they take, pen, take take years or months off her thing for what could be described as a form of lack of notice or whatever in the circumstances. Now she may get compensation for that. It's it's quite. What was she actually using it for, Stephen? Obviously not performance enhancing. Uh, she diabetes had a... and heart problems yeah. and various other issues, right? So her, her that that's, that product was just uh, prescribed for her by her doctor. So the well, doctor will be providing a medical report. Now that, will, I believe this. He will give evidence. I believe that evidence. meldonium isn't available anywhere else in the world apart from Latvia. Yeah. Uh, am I right? That could be right, yeah, yeah. parts of Europe, not just yeah. Latvia, yeah. you know, throughout Europe, yeah. It's not registered for human consumption in the USA yes. at this point yeah. in time. What, for horses? Well, no, no, that's the, the other product you're thinking of is Rapid Gel, which I actually, no, 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 which I'm is for animals only. Now you're, now <laughs> which I on, use, actually. You do use which it is for Rapid Gel. I use it for animals only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there you go. <laughs> Which is a, a gel-like substance to rub into abrasions and muscle soreness. Uh, uh, is that uh, why your stomach is why you, you tap it on your stomach? <laughs> no, no, look, I'm a very svelte, as the, the listeners can see. I've lost a bit of weight. Uh, Svelte's not a word kilos, that readily pop, kilos, pops into uh, people's minds when they see yeah. your yeah, girth. That's all right. Well, look, if, they, if people but you're want, using rapid gel, I'm, I'm interested to hear. I've, I've used rapid gel for a couple of years. And, in fact, it's now, I understand, freely available in um, some department stores, rapid gel. And what do you do with it? Uh, well, it's a, it's a gel-like substance which has got a lot of eucalyptus and alcohol in it and right. you rub it into your, into your muscles and bones where you've got soreness. If you've got some I soreness... I you're going to rub it into your... Belly. Into your belly? No, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you don't rub rapid gel into your belly because... Into it's, your muscles? It's quite a fiery product. It, 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 it's, fiery it's very product? Hot. It's a hot product. It's a bit like um, mm. DP or something, you know? Oh. It's like that. You know, just imagine if, if that you know, worked its way down into your southern regions, you'd be, you'd be screaming. So you, you'd wouldn't, screaming, you don't mate. suggest lacing your underpants with it? No, I'm just saying this. You would not do that. You wouldn't do anything like that. It's for muscle soreness, right? Well, you, you, wouldn't, you get muscle soreness, don't you? I get muscle soreness, yeah, yeah too, in the legs or whatever. If certainly I'm walking, certainly I not in the brain. That's I get <laughs> muscle soreness in the legs. Well, there's nether regions either. Now, look, okay, you were talking about Sharapova. That first hearing hasn't happened yet, right? No, no, but I'm just saying, is she going to be in the lawyer, same boat? Her lawyer she can go to the tennis, yeah. but she can't um, go on the court if she was playing for her country. No, no, no. Well, if she gets rubbed out, she gets, she's not rubbed out yet. She's still playing, as far as I know. No worry. She's so, going. Um, her lawyer has said oh. he's got about 12 defences to put up in this case, I reckon. So he's expecting to get no more than two yeah. to four months. That's what he's expecting, right? right? Sorry, I should talk into the microphone. Be very two to four months. Yeah, not too close. 12 defences he's putting up. About 12 defences. That's a lot of pickets. <laughs> defences, I said. Defences, not fences, if you don't mind. Gee whiz. You know, that's, that's okay. That's okay yeah, now. Thank you very much. No, you were right fine. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, we're all firing any up. Any closer and you're going to uh, play off. 12 defences to, uh, to any prospective charges. I'm not too sure whether she's even been presented with a charge sheet yet, but let's wait for the first hearing. But the big thing about this is this. Some of the sponsors have left her. I think yeah. Nike, Nike may have been one of them, I'm sure. Yeah. But Head International Tennis... Corporation for yeah. to make the tennis racket. They're a right? great racket to manufacture ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what the managing director of the, the, the team did? You know what they've said to Wada? They've written to Wada. You know what they've said? No. Show us the results which show that Meldonium is performance enhancing because we're not going to drop her off our list oh. of uh, players we sponsor until we're satisfied, we are satisfied, that's performance enhancing. 
And if oh. they're not satisfied, they're going to keep sponsoring them. That's what that is. So okay. it's good to see a private organisation who said, we aren't going to take any more of this water garbage, any more of this Asada rubbish and all the rest of it. We're saying produce the evidence, produce the results, the scientific results and the tests which show the subject or the, the product is performance enhancing so we can make a decision on the board table. We don't need you, WADA, to tell us how to run our business and who to sponsor. Thank you very much. This from Wada. a man who has based his life in the legal profession. So now you're a rule breaker to have absolutely... Yeah. Yeah, what, what rule have I broken? No, you, you want all these... Uh, you want the ASADA, you want the yeah, yeah, WADA, yeah. you want all these out, laws out, out. to be extinguished. Extingu I want them out of the system and I want the federal government and the sports minister to get together with the athletes. I want a moratorium on... Substances, a moratorium on with all the medical. So people you want a business. lawless sporting society? Is that what you want? Lawless? Yeah. I never, who would that come from? Well, you're just oh, getting no, rid of all organisations. No, no, but what, why does not the be on? They've only been around for about 20 years, 25 years, and we've had testing for 45 years, and we had our own system up till 2005. Yeah, so, how do you think, so you do you think, think we Justin need Justin Charles? We need our Alistair own Lynch, system. Alistair Lynch were, went, went to tribunal hearings under. Our own system. If the AFL had system. their own drug testing yeah, system, yeah. would you be happy with that? We're very happy with it. Okay, we're very in, happy with it. We're in agreement. We're in agreement on that. Yeah, yes, I, I want a I want a federal system. In fact, the system doesn't have to be run by the AFL, of course, because all the near do wells and the and the and the doomsayers out there, uh -huh. they'll be saying they'll hide results or they'll do this or do that and all the rest of it. You need the federal government. It's a government issue. This, you know, the government needs to step in on all sports and make everything. Uh, equal for all sports by having equanimity, equanimity across the board, testing and all sports at the top level across the board, right? Right. Now, is Next. That, is that a fair enough policy? But can yep. you get the sports minister? They don't care, you see, up there. They only just say, join this or we'll cut the funds off or something like this, you know? Don't give a damn about anything, you know? Right. Now, what else? Uh, what? You got anything positive <laughs> to say or...? <laughs> I think, what about St Kilda? <laughs> would you like another coffee? Or? I would like another coffee. Josh, could you, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Josh, you couldn't make me another hot <laughs> 1.5 flat white, could you? Because I need one desperately here. Thank you. Are you there, I've got to say, if you're doing a great job so far. Oh, that's yeah. very kind well, of you, Troy. We, I was just looking for the teams. I mean, no. we're stopping for a minute. There you go. Having a slight break. So we're not going live. No, no, practice run, is it? But we're going to put it on tonight, aren't we? Yeah, put it up. We've got, to get, got to get the thing up. We need to get the thing up. Oh, what was that? You don't need to talk about your... I reckon. I reckon. No, we're not on here at the moment. Don't shoot me. No. Do you want to ask the question again, Phil? No, he's all right. No. No, 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 you did, did, did everything I, you said. I, I, yeah, I'm back. He's back. Troy. Yes, absolutely, Phil. A great question. I'm loving uh, the less less of the rotations. I just think the football's been so so much better this year in the first two rounds. Players are getting tired towards the end. It's a real it's a real war of attrition. And uh, I think as a football follower, if you did a straw poll, I reckon 90% would say keep keep the rotations the way they are. I just think that the football's really opened up. And to me, it's it's a lot more exciting. Okay. Mr. Thank you, uh, Mr. Manchin, Mr. Zhang Tuck there. Uh, what I prefer in football is a coach to have total discretion and unfettered powers when it comes to handling his team out on the field, and that includes rotations to me. I, I, I don't want any limit on rotations at all. I don't care if they have 300 a game or the other coach does 150. He can do what he wants with his men. Uh, I want to see uh, also, and I'm hoping that under this uh, under this new rule, I was hoping we'd see two ruckmen per side. 
being run around. So they're bringing the Ruckman back into the game as well because every side's got about four Ruckman and one seems to get a game each week. And even now under the new rules with no sub, there's still a lot of teams only playing one Ruckman and 21 running type players or position type players or whatever. That is another problem with the whole situation. Uh, the big guys, Geelong, to me, I love the way Geelong have recruited. I love the way Geelong set up because they've got five guys in that 22 who could basically do ruck work at some stage of the game but are still good below their legs. Let's get back to the rotation issue. There's one thing I don't like when it comes into rules and regulations in the game and that's following a totalitarian Russian-style uh, well, restricted now, procedure. Now you're bringing Lennon into it. I'm bringing everything into it. Uh, totalitarian, Stalin. Yeah, totalitarian rules and regulations, hey, Russian-style to me. Putin. Putin, if you want to. And if you want to get into it. Uh, is unwarranted oh, and unnecessary. Totally unwarranted. On. Totally unnecessary what in the game of AFL football. And uh, that's what it is. It's total restriction on the free flow of the game and the free flow of a coach being able to handle his men in the way in which he wishes to do so at all times. And that includes a coach who wants to put two or three men down the back line or an extra man up yeah, the Yeah, you'd like line. to see it flooding, the, the flooding again. I haven't got a problem it? with flooding. No, I've got no man. problems Fremantle. with attack football, yeah. flooding football, defensive football, yeah. lockdown football, or physical football. Have you got the Fremantle handbook in, in, in the back pocket a, there, have you? Are you a Ross Lyon love I child? am a massive fan of Ross Lyon. Yeah. Uh, massive fan of the man uh, along the way, who's come along similar lines. Alan Jeans at St Kilda, when he started, was a massive defensive coach in the 60s. He also had the mantra of defence first, everything else second. And that's why you had guys at St Kilda, you had Brownlow medalists and place getters in Brownlow medals playing down the back line. Verdon Howe, Bob Murray, a third in a Brownlow. Uh, Verdon Howe won a Brownlow. Uh, Eric Guy on a back flank back in the 50s. And uh, the Neil Roberts, a Brownlow medalist at centre half back. Can we get was into moved the 20th century back. try? No. Uh, to, because that's where he field? played no. his best football. So okay. uh, defence, and Paul Ruse has said if you... Did they have football in the 50s? Uh, yes, yeah, they, they did. Uh, if, you, if you, Paul Ruse said last year, if you don't have a good defence, you can't win a flag. Defence is first. He said it's first, second and third, and then you worry about the rest. Defend, defend, defend. You've got to stop teams kicking goals to win flags. Are we talking flags. about basketball or are we talking We're about We're talking football? about football. You see, you, know, well, you come from a yeah. different genre. Yeah. See, Look, see, see the, the, the man in the street, I don't know I'm sensible, talking to the man the in the sensible street. Genre. He loves a, Most of them. He loves boring football, this bloke. He does. <laughs> you do love boring he wants a, football. You know, he wants a 10-goal game where each team kick five goals each and every spectator watching it's bored out of their brain. Well, well, Low-scoring uh, games, <laughs> lack of skill. <laughs> Rugby scrum, I love those games. very much. In 2009, when Ross Lyon's game plan was working to oh, perfection... Oh, Ross Lyon, every road leads to no, Ross Lyon. I'm just Lyon. saying that, Doesn't you know, those, it's, they'll, like, they'll be it's like forming. soccer. We'll have a soccer. You know, It'll be a one-goal game. Strong-bodied players so around the ball. We'll just, have, we'll just turn yeah. into soccer. Str- like one strong point. Maybe who players. scores first, and Str- then he'd be happy. Yeah. And then we'll I call mean. it off. Str- yeah. Strong-bodied players around the ball where you could see Stevie Baker doing his best work in well, a we'll pack just situation. Get Stevie Baker doing do it. his best work? In yeah. a pack situation, yeah, right? Yeah, you better have yeah. another sip of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, in a pack situation, strong bodies around the ball. Nothing Wada's, wrong with that. Wada's out the front waiting to do you a urine Well, I wouldn't pass the caffeine test now. I've had a couple of beautiful one point five. Five strength flat whites here at the of course well, liquid black pass coffee. The cheeseburger test either, Phil. No, liquid I black. I don't eat cheeseburgers. I don't know why you even said that. You I don't, I don't eat junk well, food. Here's your opportunity. Look into the camera, camera and tell everybody out there, everybody who's listening, there's a lot and, of fans out there yeah. that you are not a cheeseburger eater. I'm not a burger eater per se. I might have the odd steak sandwich. I'll have three steak sandwiches a year when I need a, a, oh, a, a light say meal. Three steak sandwiches a day. In, be- <laughs> in between a, in between a, in between meals, whatever. But I Who don't three steak sandwiches, sandwiches. in between meals. <laughs> no, a year. That's a year. That's one every 120 wow. days. I think he's a slip. It's a Freudian slip. No there. Freudian or any other type That's of That's 21 steak slip. sandwiches a week. You know? That's incredible. <laughs> That's a lot of meat. Well, you, you blokes are, There's a lot at you know, stake. You, I think you're losing... <laughs> you, <laughs> blokes are, you blokes, unfortunately, it's late in the afternoon and you're losing your marbles, but uh, we'll have to <laughs> just live with that yeah. at the moment. Now, we've got some big games coming the weekend. Let's have a look at the ladder at the moment. No, yeah, well, well top six. Top Come six. On. Well, Western There's Bulldogs good, at the moment yeah. are flying, right? They've got a fast game plan. They recruited fast players. They've been doing it the last three or four years, and they deliberately went out of their way to recruit speedy-type recruits, and that's what the approach in the pudding now. Good luck to them. Uh, and it'll be up to opposition teams to try and close them up, Troy. Yeah, absolutely, Peaky. You're a big uh, fan of Luke Beveridge in the Western Bulldogs? Massive Bulldog. fan of Luke Beveridge. Now, I've got a question about Footscray. They always start out strong. At the start of each year, they come out of the gates at 100 miles an hour. And then by about round five or six or seven, I think, 
Everyone hardens up a bit mm-hmm. and then just pummels them and runs over the top. Do you think that's going to happen that is, this year? I do not think that's going to happen this year, Phil. They've got a no. very soft draw, actually, apart from Hawthorne, who they play uh, this, week. this week. And if they get over Hawthorne, they could... Stop stealing could his coffee. Quite, <laughs> they could quite honestly be 8 or 9 zip if they really? get over Hawthorne. If they get over the Hawks this week, after the Hawks mm. absolutely put West Coast to the sword... Uh, the <laughs> oh, I just dropped the coffee here. That, that pretty much sums up uh, Stephen J. Peake, ladies and gentlemen. Don't, don't touch anything. <laughs> just keep talking. Are we still on, we're still on. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We're just yeah. built the coffee. I, I was actually going that? to make a valid point, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but see how he, how he spoils things? That's his way of saying he doesn't I'm agree. i start drinking yours. You need that? It's uh, going cold there at the moment. No, you go what? ahead, mate. No, that's no. a hot chocolate. You won't I'll have that. that. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. Thank you. Yeah, uh, look, a great question, Phil, and yeah. I've got no idea. I can't remember what you asked. I wonder me. if I could do that, run that in slow mo <laughs> when we get to it. Let's worry about the damage. I'm first show, and I'm so already damaging the place. Just recapping, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Stephen J. Peak before that uh, spillage, <laughs> Western Bulldogs for Premier. So yeah, I, I, I don't think he's too far off with that prediction. I never made a comment about that. Okay. What's he on you about? Think, well, what do you reckon? The, what Western you Bulldogs are going to definitely make the finals, and they're looking like a top four side right now. But it's a long season, and those young kids have to survive another twenty weeks playing what, what you could describe well, as on top. fast, free flowing football. Who second? But their defence is great. The Western okay. Bulldogs' yeah. defence, everything starts on that defence. Eastern Wood, he's uh, outstanding. That new guy Biggs, he, 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 he's uh-huh. a scrapper if I've ever seen when he gets Marcus everything on Marcus Adams the has been a tremendous recruit from Western Australia. The mature age, twenty-two year old. Yo, Hannison. Yeah. And Marcus Adams. Adams, sorry. Yeah. Adams is just brilliant. I saw him last week against... Johannesson, uh, absolutely, Pete. He runs the lines yep. magnificently, Johannesson. No doubt about that. Right. Sydney have surprised me. I thought they were on the way down, but they, again... You had them out of the eight. I, I had them out of the yeah, eight, that's I right. did, but yep. they've shown that uh, with really? their recruiting, I did have had them out of the eight. I thought they were going to struggle with them. A lot of their boys were trying. They lost a 1,000 games worth of experience over the summer. Well, with guys like Hanabry, Parker... Yeah, yeah that's fine. Jack in yeah. the middle, yeah, that, it's going to be a worry. So, well, JP Kennedy, right, yeah, they're going right. And Franklin is backfiring and seems to be free of the problems oh. that uh, caused him to uh, cut his shoes season short uh, in September. So, good luck to him and right, hope he next. can go through. Gold Coast, well, they're on fire. Let's face it, two out of two. Rodney Eads got him bouncing along beautifully, and this Lynch boy up at the full forward uh, line. He's uh, just uh, going from strength to strength. He's going to be scary, isn't he? Five goals against the Dockers and. Uh, yeah. He's a monster, isn't he? He's, he's huge, and uh, but he's, an he's really improved his kicking. He's an opportunist. Yeah. Uh, he's good on the ground and in the air, the kid. Right. Does Next. it nicely. North Melbourne, to me, who my little secret tip for the flag, I reckon they're just cruising along beautifully. Whoa. Jared Wade, Jeez, he's that's on a fire. Big statement, isn't it? They're my little secret tip for the flag. He's North having a, a, res- a renaissance, isn't he, Jared Wade? Well, so this is it. Once you get into a, a, a fairly strong, good system and get used to your teammates and you're, you're happy and comfortable, as you would uh, mm. know the theory, Troy, this man is uh, absolutely on fire at the moment, grabbing everything uh, and kicking goals. And if he can keep that form up, they're top four. And they're going to make the top four anyway, regardless, because he's got, he's got good men around well, him. Let's just say North fans are just saying, Peaky, it's been worth the wait. Yeah, it has been right. worth the wait, and they've got the right level of experience. And, and I'll tell you what, I want to see him win the flag because the ex and killed a boy, Del Santo, was there. I'd love to see him grab a flag before his career was over. Right up. Next. Adelaide are also doing very well, better than I thought, actually, at this point. They're also Absolutely going smash right. Port Adelaide last yeah. week in uh, in the showdown, yeah. Phil. It was a was a, just a clinical performance. Eddie Betts on fire again, Jenkins. You got tech. How old is Eddie Betts? Oh, Eddie would be hovering around, oh, he'd be... He'd have to be 29, 30. He'd yeah, have to be. Yeah. Say, he's got I'll his, tell you what, he's, he's, he's had a great end. career and he's, at the moment, he's the best small permanent small oh, forward that. pocket player in the we've game. got another oh, one for the Josh. one he's built. Josh. <laughs> well done, Josh. 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 This is Josh, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, yeah. come in right next to Peaky, mate. We can't see you. Here. Here, here he is. Thank he's putting together Josh. magnificent hot chocolate and coffee here. The coffee's the main go here. Yep. All I've got to say to Peaky is steady hands. Yeah, I just, unfortunately, Josh, I've given uh, you uh, and your people here uh, an extra job there through to my um, unfortunate accident I had about 15 minutes ago. But Well, that'll come off your sponsorship deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So we'll sort out the damage after the show. Thanks, Josh. Well Thanks, done, Josh. Josh. Port Adelaide uh, at the moment are playing football like eccentric millionaires throwing around confetti at a wedding. Cosa? 
eccentric millionaires throwing around confetti, confetti at, a wedding. at a wedding. Yes, yeah. And yeah, I'm not sure play. we understand that analogy, but they continue. have very Go little on. defensive mechanisms working for them, and they were very fortunate in round one against St Kilda to get away with that. Uh, mm. St Kilda tired due to that lack of that practice game that got washed out in Brisbane that uh, stopped them possibly having a win first up. Uh, but Port Adelaide at the moment, they, they, they keep playing that type of football week yeah. in week well, out. They, the play one, the, the they play the Bombers. Do they? Well, so all, oh, t- ladies and think, gentlemen, Essendon will beat Port wow. Adelaide on the weekend. Essendon wow. will be in the eight on Saturday night if they're playing Saturday. Once they beat Port Adelaide, and what's riding on this outlandish prediction? Uh, well, my reputation to a certain degree on that particular issue. So, Co- what's that? Essendon to beat Port Adelaide your what? on the weekend. Your reputation your, your what? in Adelaide. Your what? My reputation. What's that? <laughs> it's what's like that? the Loch Ness monster, mate. It, it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Your reputation. Hey, reputation. Jeez, oh, he, he said, oh, that, he said that with ten, such pride too. Why don't you put? Why don't you put ten bucks on it or something? Because that's about. We, you know, we, no, you know, we it. don't bet like we don't. Certainly, to the public at large, we can't start yeah. throwing those bets around because that's can't you we? have to bet with a registered uh, outlet. To, well, we've got the sports bet. Oh, we've got um, it here. Yeah, we've got it we'll, we'll worry about that in a minute. What are the other games, Pete? Uh, well, round out the weekend. Well, well, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about. We're going down the ladder at the moment, Troy. But Geelong. So what are we at? I mentioned it before. Hang on. What number are we at? We're at Geelong at the moment. On the Which is, where are they? No, they're sixth on the ladder. Okay. okay. So now Geelong, to me, they've recruited beautifully for the for the moment though. They've they've recruited to have an uplift in uh, where they're at while they bring their kids along. They've done it beautifully, Geelong, because you get Dangerfield, Henderson, and who was the other? I think they got another one too, who's pretty good amongst the recruiting. Yeah, they got Scott Selwood, but he's uh, unfortunately at the moment he's injured. Yeah, yeah well, him? he's the sort of boy that he'll, can. Uh, he'll be a great tagger. He will uh, be a good tagger. Obviously, he did a great job at West Coast, so he'll. What's the matter with him at the moment? You know? Not not hundred percent no. sure there, Phil, but um, obviously the Selwood brothers yeah. back together yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, Got a young kid right down the back line, Ruggles, who's just coming through at the moment. Who's that? Right. Young well, Ruggles coming us, through in the right, back that, line. That, that, that R- now hang on, Phil. Top six. No, hang on, mate. I've, no. I've just no, no. got to do a spell check. What's that, Ruggles? Ruggles. Yeah, T yeah. Ruggles, number thirty-six for Geelong. That's in the back line for Geelong. You may have to sit down for this with the other copy. Tell you who the Geelong back line this week is: Collar Jashney. Lonigan and Ruggles. Who? Like Colin Troy? Yeah, no. Yeah, no, yeah. Lonigan, not. Ruggles. The half back line, Mackie, Taylor, Enright. The centre line, Bartell, Selwood, Blysarves or Blickarves, depending on where you went to school. Yeah, Blickarves, yeah. Yeah. Then you got the half forward, no, the, sorry, the um, in the middle there, you got the Smiths, the Ruckman, Big Zach Smith, like him, Duncan and Dangerfield. Now, notice. Mitch Duncan is playing. Yeah. No ramifications from last week from that massive hit by the big rig, Shane Munford. Uh, half forward on a Motlop, Kirsten uh, and Ling. That's probably, Kirsten will need to lift. I don't know whether they can go into a final series with Kirsten centre half forward, but that's for them to, to work out. Menzel, Hawkins and McCarthy. Yeah, great up to board. see Menzel, Menzel back. Yeah, superb. And then the interchanges are from Caddy, Cockatoo. Uh, Gregson, Guthrie, Hall and Smith, Henderson and Stanley. So mm, They've I certainly mean, got depth, haven't they? They've got massive yeah. depth. When you've got depth like that, you're going to make the finals and, and they could possibly grab fourth spot, but I see them more as a five or six team at the moment. But they've done it well to uh, put themselves into who that are they, the position. Who are they playing? So they're playing Brisbane Lions at Geelong on well, Sunday and they, they will wallop them. They'll well, wallop them. Hmm? Who's in? Who's out? Uh, yes, for Geelong, in at the moment. Don't forget it's Science an extended bench the uh, there, mm. Philip. Menzel, Ruggles, Hall and Smith and Cocker too and out goes Murdoch with a soreness. Right. And the new man is Ruggles. It's his first game from Geelong in the VFL. Congratulations, Ruggles. making yeah. his debut. His debut there against Brisbane. Right. They've got Robinson in, Dawson, Robertson and Evans and out goes Rockcliffe with a calf. So right. I think they're going to get walloped uh, there. Uh, let's go what back do you to do tonight, first? Uh, just quickly. Tonight, tonight we've got... Tonight is uh, Power and Bombers. Essendon for, me, for mine. I just think that uh, they're Troy? on the up now. Yeah, look, uh, I, I'd like to tip Essendon, but uh, just Port Adelaide. I just think they'll be, they'll be too strong and they'll be... They'll be embarrassed by last week, Port Adelaide, after the yeah. performance they put in against uh, the Crows. Yeah, no, I so I think they'll, they'll, they'll well, come and back I think with a vengeance. Yeah, yeah. And I think Essendon will be a bit... I, just, I reckon Port Adelaide are flaky. I reckon they're a bit flaky. Flaky? Yeah, flaky. And, I think, uh, you, I think you're, you're drawing a long bow with the Bombers to beat them. Yeah, right? it is, but I think that uh, the Bombers now know that they, they've got strong bodies and they can win games of football. And if you come up against a side that's flaky and catch them on the down, or possibly not at 100%, 
they don't bring their A game to the field. They could uh, give them right something on. to go so on with. So who's in? Well, who's in so and who's out? Uh, in the Essendon and Port Adelaide the situation then, uh, coming in for uh, Port is uh, Paul Stewart, uh, Ammon and Byrne Jones. He's new. And out goes Carlisle uh, Wingard, who's got a hamstring. That's yeah, a massive out. Huge loss. And Howard. Now, they didn't even know he was out, and I tipped oh. Essendon. Well, now I'm definitely tipping Essendon. I'm going to have a bet on that game. I'm going to have a decent bet because, uh, you know, Wingard out. St Kilda, you're staking your reputation too on I'm happy to stake it. Game. Yeah, I'm happy to stake it on that uh, particular game. St Kilda played Collingwood tomorrow. Uh, St Kilda, in for St Kilda, Minching and gets another crack at it across half forward. And Gresham out, the young kid who's played a couple of games, got caught out a bit last week with the ball. Too much handball, St Kilda at the moment. Too much dinky kicking, too much handball. Well, actually, they, they've really got to get the ball, don't they? Well, they get it. They, they, I must admit the Western Bulldogs had 120 more <laughs> possessions. But you can't kick goals if you haven't got the ball in Yeah, that's correct. Ball. But you can't kick idea. goals, Toy, when you run down the ground and handball it eight times. Player number eight's going to get crunched or walloped by two or three of the opposition who's going to be waiting for him like a tiger prowling the jungle for a, a beaver skin to walk past or a... Tiger uh, prowling the jungle for a beaver skin to walk past. Walk past a beaver <laughs> or a... That needs to be replayed yes. ad nauseum. Yes. That's a beaver one skin of the more, in the jungle. In the jungle. The more ridiculous for, things that you Or even a, a small, small minky or chimpanzee. It's now a small minky. Yeah, minky. A minky or a chimpanzee, wow. yeah, yeah, coming through. And, uh, <laughs> a beaver. <laughs> Leave it. To be. <laughs> You're correct, Troy. So get on with that's it. What can well, we've, got, we've got David Attenborough in the studio. <laughs> Great to have him on board. <laughs> Collie would have the got legal whisper. <laughs> Collie would have got gold sack in. Animal Our whisperer. Goodyear and Maynard are in. Out goes McCaffer, Frost, Galt, and Ramsey with a knee. He's only injured. Three droppings there for Collie. Well, that's quite surprising for me. Three droppings. In the jungle. <laughs> Three players drop, drop, film. The, the new man in was Jeremy Howley, the skyscraping marking boy from Melbourne, finally gets a go. Then Matthew Goodyear from Calder under 18s. Oh. So gold second well, Goodyear. He'll have a good set of wheels. <laughs> oh, you know, so. <laughs> Richmond v Adelaide. In for Richmond, Chaplin, Edwards, Lennon and Rioli. Well, they're, we're blessed, back they're to, blessed to have Chaplin. Eh? We're back to Russia again. We've got Lennon in. We're back, we're back in Russia. Lennon and Riola. Lennon's back in. Lennon's back. Well, yeah. that's, that's good. That's well, good for just football. Started right? a couple of revolutions in his time, but yeah. he's now back in the side. All right? Apparently, he's seeing red at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Big Griffiths, T Hunt, Taylor Hunt, who's been maligned during the week. He made a few, made a few big, big mistakes, Errors. didn't he, against okay. Collingwood? Okay, Townsend. at vital times. The Townsend is out, and Grimes has got a hamstring. Simon Townsend's in. Uh, Townsend. He's Wonderworld. Jay Townsend. Jay Townsend. Townsend. Okay. Grimes hamstring. No change to the Adelaide side. They're pretty confident. And Brody Smith plays his 100th game oh, coming congratulations. up. So well done to that's Brody. A, that's a quick 100 he's got off Brody and, uh, Smith. And, uh, and while we're thanking people for milestones, Nick Revolt last week, 300 games. And yeah, 650 goals peaking. for the champion. Yeah. Ultra champion, super and champion. And was probably one in the three best for the Saints? Uh, he was St Kilda's, in my opinion, he was St Kilda's best mm. player because he, he took 14 marks, had 23 possessions and Did seemed to be the only person. I was there, all right. I, I got there late because I was down at the Mornington Cup Prior to that, Philip, to see Don Dorimo, uh, unfortunately Lose. came eight. But, um, was it, but it was a fast finishing eight. Well, it was a massive eight because the first eight horses in a, in a listed race. Think think it, this is a black type listed race, the Mornington Cup, with the uh, winner getting an automatic entry into it's the Caulfield best Cup. Best distance is over 6,500 metres, Phil. So <laughs> it's just looking for a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, you see, those type of comments, they get us nowhere. They there, do. Are no, no, no. there are no 6,500 metre races anywhere oh. in the world. Well, you we know. need to find one. <laughs> well, I don't think there are any. But I can tell you that the so first eight it, horses in the morning in Cup of yet? broke the course record, Phil. Is it glue yet? No, it is not glue. It is one hundred and sixty-eight or $170,000. And you're talking about glue. It I, I find eight. that offensive, actually. That's quite <laughs> offensive. It ran eight. It was up the front of the field. It followed Tom it Melbourne. Be, it it was eight. tracking Tom Melbourne. Michelle Payne rode a ride that was perfect to well, instruction. I heard the clerk of the course's horse beat at home. Well, he must I have, only heard. He oh. must have had more than Meldonium in him to do that or more than uh, our EPO and HGH combined or peptides because uh, <laughs> that would be absolutely ridiculous, Troy, because the first eight... How many times do I have to repeat myself? The first eight horses broke the course record. Barisha broke the course record by four seconds. Uh, what did it four lose? How many lengths? On a good how, many lengths? how many lengths? Four lengths from the by? winner, from Barisha. We were up the front. Let me tell you something. Just, Tom for, Melbourne, just for our listeners, Pete, yeah. Yeah, we'll just paint the picture. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, paint a picture, paint it. And the yeah, viewers, the listeners, the clairvoyance, the clair audience out there, mm. 
Steve, and the studio and audience Yeah, here. the studio audience who have been very quiet and very respectful, mm-hmm. I've got to say. Yep. <laughs> now, Peaky, you're a part owner of Don, Don Doremo, Doremo, correct? correct? Yes, correct, with Sergio Thoroughbridge. And Don Doremo has started how many times? Uh, about 21 times now, I think, for four, four. wins, uh, three or four seconds and three thirds, and I think. So that's actually done all right. Money? Uh, about 160 Fantastic. odd grand. Yeah, okay, well, so we painted the picture. He's a bit light on for prize money, but we believe that now. Way. Paid his way. Yeah, paid his way. As a five-year-old, his best four years, five, six, seven, eight, we expect. He's got four more runs this campaign coming up. He's going to run in the Tarang Cup on the 17th of April, which is not a great deal of prize money. I think it's 27,000 first prize over 2,150 metres. From there, he will go to a benchmark 90 at Flemington over 24 or 500 metres. He'll then go to the Warrnambool Cup and he'll then go to the Andrew Ramsden Stakes at Flemington on the 21st of May. So his next six weeks, he's got four starts right, coming well, up we'll in six follow weeks. Him, we will follow him each week. He's Get a on. mighty galloper. He's got a big he heart is. and we've he's got a, Michelle yeah. Payne riding him. He's got you as his, throughout the his whole PR camp, man. Camp, campaign. Right, so, yeah, next, let's get back next. to business here. Business, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're about here. Sporting business. Uh, Sydney is playing the Giants in a derby up in uh, Sydney of all places. It would appear. Well, that's unbelievable because you wouldn't think they'd play a derby <laughs> being the, two Sydney teams in the, Sydney. It, it, the, quite extraordinary, Phil. That's unbelievable. At the Sydney Cricket Ground, I might add. That's end. fair dinkum, unbelievable. 4.35pm. <laughs> 4, 4 uh, twilight game. In McGlynn for Swans. Yeah, out goes good in. Good in. McGlynn, a good in. And out goes Big Dean Towers. Uh, for the GWS Giants, in comes Patful and out goes Marchbank with an ankle. Oh, Patful's a good in. Yeah, Very look, good I, defender. That, 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 that's a 50 50 game. The way GWS have picked up the beach along last week. Yeah, I'd agree with you there, Pete. 50 50. And yep. I reckon that, look, they tough could, for grabs. I reckon that's down to a goal. I'll stick with Sydney just because uh-huh. I, I just think they're, they're, just, like, they're being very resilient at the moment. Gold Coast are playing Carlton. Gold Coast at Metricon Stadium there on the coast. In comes Rosa for them. Matt Rosa, the former West Coast boy. Out goes uh, CR Chi, who's got an illness. CR Chi. Has an illness. In for Carlton. C R C C R C. The initial C. Is that Archie? C R C. No, not Archie. That's. I thought you said Archie. Archie. I said illness. He's got an illness. In well, comes for Carlton. In comes. I hope it's not a sneezing illness. No, no. no I was. <laughs> uh, He's got a cold. Uh, no. He's got an illness. I don't. It doesn't specify the type of medical issue that he, the boy does have. But no doubt, if you went to the website, the Gold Coast website, they might be able to give you some more details. Get on with it. <laughs> Carlton. Carlton. In for Carlton. And Buckley, young Buckley, that's the son of Jim. Now, Wiley and Byrne. And I've heard Byrne. I think he's an Irish lad. He's got a, a real bit of toe about him. Out goes Everett, who's injured. Lamb's injured. And Simon White's been omitted. Uh, Gold Coast, I think, will be way, way too strong for the Blues here. And you'd expect a, a fairly, probably a father of a hiding coming up there, possibly. Troy? Troy. Tell you what, Peaky's making a lot of sense. Yeah, when he actually really? gets on the facts and figures and uh, the ins and outs of teams, he actually knows his football. Yeah, I rarely right stray from the uh, um, facts and substance. Not great know. on names, but he knows a bit about, <laughs> a bit about the football. Right, well, thank thanks. you very much, Troy. West Coast are playing for Mantle in another derby, this time taking place at Subiaco at 7.40pm tomorrow night. In Maston for West Coast, he's the lad with the... Uh, the heavily tattooed. Tattoos and hair everywhere and yeah. beards and moustaches and all the rest of it. But a ball magnet, nonetheless. Yeah, no doubt about that. One thing, I, I don't want to sound old-fashioned here, well, but I'm, I'm going to But he is going it. to sound old-fashioned, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I, you are old-fashioned. I don't mind the odd tattoo here and there. Oh. And anyway, yeah, on your body, do you understand have a tattoo? I players like Brady Grundy and even Josh Bruce at St Kilda Well, you've got hair. a St Kilda 66 and tattoo, but we haven't found out on what part of your body it is. No, no I don't have any tattoos on me. I don't you have any tattoos. But I can understand how it could be comfortable for a footballer to have hair all over their face, fl- flipping around, flying around, sweat, <laughs> hair sticking to their foreheads and face. And the backs of their necks, you know, uh, 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 strangu- strangulation everywhere with hair around their right. necks. And are you talking George the Animal Steel type <laughs> style? Are you? <laughs> saying that, how could that be comfortable playing sport with 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 th- that level of irritation? I, I I sometimes don't shave for three days, oh, and I start to get horrible. and I get agitated and irritable, and I have to I just have to get You're rid of agitated it. Agitated and, and irritable most of the time. Well, I've got to get <laughs> I have to get rid of it then, you know. Rid of it. I don't know how that. You haven't shaved today. 
Uh, I didn't shave today, but I don't think it's all no. that noticeable. So, I so you know, for the first show, yeah. I wore a suit. Yeah. Looking Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, you come in. David with Jones shirt and a, and a David pair of Jones, and Jones slacks. Shaving, you I've know. got my best slacks on. Yeah, your best slacks. Yeah, my best slacks. Jeez, you're about one. <laughs> you're looking more like Alan Jones at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that is, that's a despicable comment, <laughs> comparing me to him. That is despicable. Get, get on with it. Anyway, where was I? West Coast. Where we were you? In right there. Bastard. Out goes <laughs> Benell. The milestone is Prittis, his 200th game, the uh, boy, the Brownlow. How missed. good has he been, Phil? He's been Matthew mighty. Prittis, what a, what a player. Yep, a great Brown player. Brownlow medalist, BNFs. Yeah, done it all, all done it all. You've got two minutes, keep going. In De Boer for Fremantle. De Boer comes in and out goes Pierce with that C. That's Pierce what you should change your name Pierce. to by detail. De Boer. <laughs> You're De Boering <laughs> the hell out of me at the moment. <laughs> hamstring. De Boer, not De Boer, Pierce. Pierce. De Boer's in, Pierce has got the hamstring, right? I'm actually going to tip an upset here. I reckon Fremantle can turn it around. Oh, there's a oh, surprise, Phil. You're tripping. I reckon they're going to go back down to lockdown and they're, Have going, to, they're going to tie up West Coast. <laughs> Have another like coffee. They're going, to, they're going to tie up West Coast Are like they? that Indian rubber man that uh, used to oh, get out of all those chains. In a, they throw him into a pool of water 20 feet deep. It's all yeah. chained up and get out of the chains. It's a little Harry Houdini style. Harry Houdini. Houdini's the man I'm looking for. He's, oh, right. the, he's yeah. the man I'm talking about. I know yeah. his well, brother, Harry, who didn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're tripping. No way that Fremantle are going to beat West. They're three dollars fifteen and West Coast dollar thirty six. But I'm going to take I'm going to take a, a Fremantle Essendon and double, and yeah. I reckon I could be well, celebrating just give, big time. Just give me the money, and, and then I'll take and, it. and then put them put that all the winnings of that into <laughs> Melbourne. Melbourne problem. to beat Port Adelaide. So. Okay, yeah. well, we Go. haven't got to that yet. Uh, we haven't got to Melbourne at this point in time. No. Uh, in fact, we've got, we're coming to that now. North Melbourne right. v Melbourne. Well, actually, yeah. Essendon are playing Port Adelaide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Melbourne have got as much chance of beating North Melbourne uh, of I have of being cast as the, you know, the next star of Mad Max 5 or whatever it is, you know? That's, that's where that's at. Frank Thring. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's got a lot of Frank Mel- Thring about him, hasn't he? Melbourne. That's all I can say. Hey? Melbourne. That's all I can say. In comes Dunn, Grimes, Frost, Wagner. Wagner and Stretch. Out goes Garland and Brayshaw on the extended bench. Yeah. John Wagner is a new boy. He's from Aspley. He's a 21-year-old from Aspley. Yeah, it's in Queensland. In Queensland? Yep. Okay, another is. Queenslander coming into it for Melbourne. Un- unusual to see Angus Brayshaw being, uh, being yeah, dropped. Admitted. Well, that's a bad Goss. move there. Angus Brayshaw omitted. That's a very bad sign. Now, Paul Roos said during the week he was talking about big heads, and that looks like a couple of players have been dropped for having big heads, maybe. Uh. Possibly. I don't know for sure. It's my synopsis, or my uh, opinion. <laughs> right, uh, next. Come, for North Melbourne comes Scott Thompson, a tough fullback. Uh, Mullet. Mullet comes in. And Dumont. T. Dumont. I don't know that lad at all. I don't know Mullet or Dumont, Troy. You, you tell yeah, us something about those two boys, will you? Yeah, well, well Mullet's a, uh, a, a very good player. Yeah. If um, Mullet's from, uh, he's from Western Australia. Yeah. And uh, Trent Dumont, he, uh, he burst onto the scene uh, last year and he kicked a couple of winning goals. So okay. he's a, uh, a small forward. Uh, very dangerous forward, so it's good yeah. to see him get a go. Good to see him there, that's okay. Western Bulldogs, Hawthorne, we sort of discussed that earlier on in the piece. To me, right I, I, think, we'll leave that. Who's gonna win? I think Western Bulldogs can get him, actually, not by much, a few points, but I oh. think they can Be get him. Be a great game. Who do you think, Troy? Yeah, oh, look, I think the Western Bulldogs, maybe mm. two to three goals. Oh, well, I'm Hawks for me by a goal. Yeah, in for Hawthorne, Shields, Pitanay, and Hardwick. No time. Next one. And uh, Geelong, with, uh, Geelong, Brisbane, I've already said Geelong will flog. Brisbane, I think we've already covered that. Yep. Troy, so, yeah. Geelong. Geelong. Can I just me. quickly say uh, there, uh, uh, Philip, uh, there, if you're in the Albert Park region, don't forget to visit Ricardo's Trattoria for a beautiful home-style Italian meal because they have got the best Italian food in the Southern Hemisphere. Absolutely, and uh, mine host, Philippe, he will, uh, he'll look after you, no doubt, about that, Peaky. He, he certainly yeah. will. And the, the menu, which I have in front of me, is just an absolute mm. potpourri of the top Italian dishes you could ever wish Just to let's have. say... Pot, uh, well, potpourri's French. Uh, so. it, it may well be, but we can use it in that... Silent tea, mate. Potpourri. Well, I like the potpourri, but in, yeah. in any event... You yellow, love your pot, don't you? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yellow, <laughs> yellow, yellow Door Cafe at the moment. Four icy cold Coronas in a bucket for 20 bucks. How at many? Yellow door. Four icy cold Four. Coronas in a bucket for 20 bucks. You mentioned the at show. Yellow Door. Breakfast of the Champions. Mix eggs, like Bloody Mary, just for $22. Oh. Finest House Palmer. 
pork, pork sliders, oh. uh, breakfast sliders, mini burger sliders, all, all weather things courtyard. you eat for breakfast. <laughs> you have all that for breakfast. He loves and dog friendly courtyard, Phil. In a bucket. Family and dog friendly courtyard. Dog friendly Lunch pot, special, any pork sliders. What more could you and ask? Don't forget for? a very good friend here, Philip Mance. Phil it's all happening at Alan Mance this week. Don't stress relate. Don't pontificate. Don't hesitate. Just get down to Alan Mance then join the race with beast and you get an interest rate deal on your new holder that won't make your accountant hyperventilate. Alan Mance Motors, Footscray, Melton and Backus Marsh. Mance Mania has got a hold of me. Yeah, baby! Oh, well done, oh. Peaky. That is fantastic. <laughs> you, can you can move now. <laughs> Pretty happy with himself, ladies and gentlemen. This bloke, isn't he? He's had, he's had three coffees you, and yes. one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> He'll see you next week. And one on the floor. We will see you again next week for more of the Gladiators of Sport here on YouTube and the Alan Mance Mulder's Gladiators of Sport coming to you from Liquid Black Coffee, 165 Ashworth Street, Middle Park, for all your coffee requirements and purchases. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Signing off. Bye for now.